Welcome to CBS 2018 here in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, where I'm very pleased to be joined in our studio here by Stella Izochuku Dennis, who is the founder of the Odyssey Educational Foundation from Nigeria. Stella, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be here, I must say. Great. <laughs> it's, it's been a warm and um, enjoyable um, atmosphere, I must say. Wonderful. Well, let's yeah. talk a little bit about this symposium. What brings you here? Why, why do you think it's important to attend this symposium? Well, it's really important to uh, attend this symposium because I feel um, the voices of the kids too should be heard in this kind of symposium. It shouldn't just be the people in the university, it shouldn't just be the workers who are doing it, who are undergoing the um, continuous learning, you know. The kids has to be involved and that's where I work. I work with the kids, I work with the women, I work with the children from the underserved area and so I feel that we should be inclusive here. So I'm grateful that uh, CBS thought it's wise to be able to include us this time around. So tell us a little bit about the, the Odyssey Educational Foundation. What, what exactly do you do? Yeah, Odyssey Educational Foundation is an organization that was born out of the need to ensure that the Nigerian child becomes, and uh, the African child in particular, to become digitally inclusive. We have found that it is um, technology has made the world a smaller place and we can't say we are not involved. We have to be involved. And so that has actually made us to understand that there's a need for the Nigerian child to be inclusive. I actually read education, um, electrical electronics, but I had to leave that to be able to work with the children because there's a need for us to bring up the kids in the way that they would understand that they are digital natives and um, there's no need for them to be excluded. They should be included and then that's what educa Odyssey Educational Foundation is actually doing in Nigeria to make sure that the African child is not left out. And what age groups are you looking at here? Oh yeah, we work with kids as little as six years old and then we walk through 105 or 107, yeah, because we're working, presently we have a project where we've picked up market women who can not do anything, who, do, who, who has this big phone and don't know what to do with it. So we're teaching them um, digital marketing where they're able to extend their business beyond their immediate community. So we're working with kids though, but we are still touching the adults because we don't want them to be left out too. Absolutely. And in terms of developing skills for this inclusive digital society, what do you think are the main challenges? Well, we have a lot of challenges. Like I have, if you would watch what I talked about or what I will talk about this afternoon, we have one is funding. And then two, I don't want to b bother on that because it's like that everywhere. But the second one is um, a lot of our organization, especially the government, is not ready to embrace the change. So they, they want to remain um, in the dark age. And we, the youth, have said no to this. So that's why we, it's, it's a challenge because for my government, it's not yet included in the curriculum. I'm doing it as an after school, so it's just an add-on. It's not yet um, included in the curriculum. And so um, that's one of it. And typically in Nigeria, we have what is called the Boko Haram, where they believe that Western education, it's an abomination. So we're fighting with a lot of people because so many families don't want to get included in this digital era. They feel it's not for us, but it's not true. And um, so it's one of the challenges we are actually having. And then we have the um, early marriages. We still have a lot of people in Nigeria wanting to give away their children early. I had a program last year during the International Day of the Girl Child where I went to some of the villages and I spoke with the women and the women are like, oh yeah, we're okay with our children getting married early, especially the young girls. And I have a flair for the young girls. I'm working with a lot young, more, young girls more than the boys. Not that I'm leaving the boys out, but I'm ensuring that more girls are involved in this program I'm working with. So, um, religion, early marriage has become one of the problems too we're actually facing in ensuring. Infrastructure too is one of the basic. Um, like if you get to my center you will see that I have on one system we have over 10 kids trying to work on it. So we have infrastructural 
problem. And I had, um, during this symposium too, a lot of people talking about the IPV6 and all that. We don't even have IPV1, talk of the IPV6. So infra infrastructure, and then I had about the, the uh, cables and um, like, yeah, I mean the city, we have about 4, 4G, but almost all the rural area, we still have 2G, we're still battling with 2G and all that. And it's not even um, in every area. I, I must say, it's not everywhere. So we're still battling with infrastructure and um, government bureaucracy. Those are basically are the problems we're facing, trying to ensure that the Nigerian child is up there with their mates in the digital era. Well, very, very valuable insights there, and, and, and obviously uh, a very, very worthy cause. I just wanted to, to ask you in terms of the conversations that you've been hearing here, you've alluded to, to some of those essentially, how useful do you think it'll be uh, to, uh, will you be taking back some of the, the, the uh, information that you've been, been uh, exchanging here? What, what, you know, what do you think your presence here basically will, will be uh, most um, valuable to you? Yeah, the, um, I will be taking a lot back to Nigeria. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, this morning during the section I had about what ITU can, how ITU can partner with you and all that. I'll be exploring more of that. I'll be wanting to ask a lot of questions. And then there's this young man too who came from MIT. Uh, I know MIT too has, we've been using a lot of their curriculum, like we use Scratch. Scratch is an MIT, App Inventor is an MIT product, so I would, also want to leverage on that. I'll, I, I got his um, email and I'll be um, emailing him right after now to be able to ensure that we, got, we get more things to be able to um, offer the, girl, the children in Nigeria. What about uh, in terms of personal stories? I mean, you must have come across a lot of different uh, stories that have inspired you, that have uh, moved you. I just wanted to find, find out if there's been has there been anyone in specifically that you could perhaps share with us that uh, that might just give us a little bit of an insight into the the, the situation that uh, the situations that you have encountered. Yeah, there's a lot of um, personal stories I had. Um, there's this um, lady I can't remember her name now. She, um, she was on the panel this morning and she was telling us how um, when the kids go to the internet, they have a lot of resources available to them and she will just help channel these resources and ensure that it becomes um, on point for them. So um, that is one of the stories that really has, I've been battling with because the, the kids to come around and say, oh, we saw this, we saw this, can we do this, can we, do? because a lot of resources are on the internet for the kids. So it helps me to be able to um, work with them. I, 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 I heard how she has been able to work with her own um, kids, and so I'll be able to hold on to that and work. And, and what about your own? What about on your own stories? What about something sharing, perhaps something that uh, that you've experienced in in the time when the the, the of the the foundation? Oh yes, I have a lot of stories to tell. Like um, like I said, I actually started as an engineer in Nigeria. I worked with a telecom firm. Funny enough, but um, when I got to India to do my masters, I found out that kids we're doing so well when it comes to after school, and that's where I got it from. So I picked up that, and when I came back to Nigeria, I ensured that I had an after school club where the kids come in and then have all this. And then I've also, um, I have a, a very personal story to, to tell too, because um, at first when we started, we thought we would just um, have everything done in Nigeria. But funny enough, some of our girls and kids have, um, engaged in a lot of competition and they have won. We have a lot of plus, 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 plus. We just even got one last month and uh, we're hoping an announcement too will be made today and we're expecting that uh, team too will be up there. So it's a lot of things, a lot of inspiration for me and then a lot of things that um, we have started as Odyssey Educational Foundation and we're moving forward. And also, it's also a plus that um, CBS2 found me as a resource person to be able to speak in this program this year. 
Well, Stella, thank you very much indeed for joining us in the studio. Thanks for being here at the symposium. We wish you the very best of luck with your foundation and hope to catch up with you again sometime in the future, hopefully. Yeah, thank you so much. That's I'm grateful. Great. Thanks yeah, a lot. Thank you. <laughs>